Qatar remains defiant as diplomatic crisis escalates in the Gulf. Hello, I'm Nathan King in for Anand Naidu and this is The Heat. It started with Bahrain. The Gulf state severed ties with its neighbour Qatar a little more than a week ago. And multiple Arab states followed, including Saudi Arabia, Egypt and the United Arab Emirates. The Arab nations cite terrorism and extremism as the reason behind cutting off Qatar. All allegations Qatar denies. For the latest on the crisis in the Gulf, CGTN's Sean Calebs joins us in the newsroom. Sean, thanks for joining us. It's, what, been almost 10 days since the country started severing diplomatic relations? Things have continued to escalate since. Where do you think things stand right now? Well, I think you're exactly right. If you look at the way it has escalated, it has not only enveloped nations in the Middle East, it is reaching beyond now. Uh, Turkey, the latest nation to come out and speak uh, openly about this. Of course, uh, Turkey is uh, close with Doha, uh, and uh, the, but also wants to keep its relations with Saudi Arabia uh, very close as well. Uh, the president of Turkey calling the blockade, if you will, saying that it is uh, an, an insult against Islamic values. And uh, very important uh, that one of its key allies comes out and talks right now, because if you think about what has happened, not only the blockade the uh, going on in the area, but also those nations you've discussed closing their airspace, uh, basically keeping uh, the uh, people of, of Qatar in uh, their own country. And if you think about it, only of the 2.7 people who, 2.7 million people who live there, an overwhelming majority, something like 80 percent, are migrant workers who move uh, to work in that area and count on making some kind of money. And 80 percent of the food that comes into the country uh, is uh, imported. So the people who are really going to be hurt are perhaps the poorest of those people uh, in, in uh, the area. Now, Kuwait has reached in and it has offered to try and broker a way uh, out of this. But so far, nothing significant uh, has come of this. Uh, Qatar has said that it is open to talking uh, about finding a way to move forward uh, in all of this. But what uh, the nations that we've discussed really want, they want Qatar to cut its ties with Iran. That is very important as well. And Iran, meanwhile, flew about five uh, uh, airlines filled with food into Doha uh, earlier and said that they will continue to do this uh, until this crisis um, uh, winds up. Nathan? Sean, uh, often in these situations, the U.S. has uh, played a sort of uh, honest broker or, or, or at least mediated. Secretary of State uh, uh, Tillerson has spoken publicly about the situation in the Gulf. Uh, so has the, has the president. But their statements haven't really lined up. What's going on? You know, it's just more of the Trump administration. They say one thing one minute, one thing another. Secretary of State Tillerson coming out and saying he's very concerned about this blockade, saying it could have humanitarian effects, worried about the very poor in that country, the people who aren't from uh, Qatar, the people who could be really hurt. And then <laughs> virtually an hour later, Donald Trump coming out talking about what's going on. Uh, he did not say that the blockade needed to be eased. He went on to say that, uh, that is a, Qatar is a nation that is funding terrorism at a very high level, and nations could take the easy road out or they could take the hard road, one that is necessary. Here's a, a, just a, a glimpse of the way these two sound bites just don't mesh. We call on the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and Egypt to ease the blockade against Qatar. There are humanitarian consequences to this blockade. The time had come to call on Qatar to end its funding. They have to end that funding and its extremist ideology in terms of funding. And it doesn't end there. Tillerson talked about the effect that it could have on 10,000 U.S. troops that are at a Qatari air base. And it's really a jump-off point to hit trouble spots in the region, saying that what's going on could affect the U.S. military. However, Nathan, the Pentagon has said repeatedly that it is not going to have an adverse effect on the U.S. military. So, again, comments that don't jive. And one final note, it's interesting that the uh, Qatar has hired former U.S. Attorney uh, General John Ashcroft to try and basically 
find a way out in an international forum uh, for the Qatari. So uh, this is something that is just growing and growing uh, in 10 days and is certainly having effect on the region and threatens to reach out even further. In fact, we know that the uh, king of Saudi Arabia recently met with Vladimir Putin, and Putin said that he's concerned about what could happen in Syria because of all of this.